We now moving on to uh, Dr. Rosemary. Dr. Rosemary is consultant at Ahilya Hospital Palak at uh, Upper Tambi, and she is going to speak to us about approach to optic disc edema. Over to Dr. Rosemary. Good afternoon, everyone, and I thank KSOS and Dr. Thomas for the opportunity to speak on approach to disc edema. And I would like to share with you what my patients and my neurology and radiology friends have been teaching me about disc edema over the past few years. So that is prerequisite number one to manage disc edema, become good friends with your neurologist and your radiologist. So the first question we have to encounter in disc edema is, is this disc truly edematous or is it just a pseudo disc edema? Right from our PG days, we are, well, we are well versed with the 10 signs of true disc edema, the five mechanical signs, the five vascular signs. But when it comes to actual clinical practice, all these discs can confuse us. So get this straight, it is not enough that the disc has a mechanical sign of disc margin blurring as in the myelinated nerve fibers or peripapillary changes as you see in that tilted disc, but it is also imperative that you have vascular changes, especially, look at the last slide. In that, the disc appears to be very much elevated, the peripapillary area appears to be elevated, but look at the vessels. Even the smallest vessels are not obscured and note the absence of hemorrhages, cotton wool spots. So all these are pseudodisc edema. And of course, optic nerve head drusen, you have a wide variety of modalities that can help you to diagnose the same. Now, OCT is also an accessory tool for the ophthalmologist now. In case of papilledema, you are still suspecting, is this pseudodisc edema both or papilledema? Take a section of the optic nerve head, look at the RPA Brooks membrane. It is said that the nasal angle of the RPA Brooks membrane will show an inward tilt towards the vitreous and that will be more than the temporal angle. If you see this image, you can see an upward tilt in the initial image that subsides, that straightens out as the disc edema subsides. So now we have ascertained that this is true disc edema. Now what do we do next? Look at the other eye. Okay, so is it a unilateral disc edema or is it a bilateral disc edema? The next step will be you have to ascertain whether there is an optic neuropathy or not. Is the nerve function affected or not? So first we'll go on to bilateral disc edema. We go on to the cases, 27-year-old male presented with headache, one month duration, blurring of vision, few days, no known comorbidity, optic nerve function normal. I look at the fundus, I see a disc edema. So what do I do? I look at the other fundus, again I see a disc edema. Now sit tight. Don't be too elated at having found a disc edema, you still have business to attend to. What do you do next? Mostly these young males come alone to the OPD. Immediately insist that you need a responsible bystander and dilate the patient. Don't keep it for another day. Insist that the disc is crying out for help. This is an emergency. Call up a responsible bystander. And while the patient is being dilated, ask your staff nurse to check the blood pressure. Now the responsible bystander comes. You dilate and this is the dilated fundus examination. Your staff nurse comes and tells you the BP is 120 80. So what do you do? You ask the BP apparatus to be brought to the OPD and please personally check the blood pressure yourself. I am an ophthalmologist, I no longer have a stethoscope, very right, but at least do the palpatory method of blood pressure measurement. This patient had a blood pressure of 200 So this is a grade 4 malignant hypertensive retinopathy and these are patients that are literally at risk of dropping dead in front of you. So insist that the patient be referred as soon as possible to the nearest casualty services and see is admitted and the blood pressure is lowered. Next case, similar scenario, again a patient comes with headache, optic nerve function, normal. One disc shows disc edema, other eye disc edema, in this case the blood pressure was normal. Dilated retina assessment didn't show anything new. So what do I do next? Now I'm suspecting papilledema. Now, papilledema is only used when you're suspecting that the disc edema is due to a raised ICT. So I sent for an MRI and MR venogram, sent for both. Both came back as normal. The neurologist calls me up and I say, okay, sir, we'll go for an LP puncture. The CSF analysis came back as normal while the CSF opening pressure was high. So this was diagnosed as a case of idiopathic intracranial hypertension. Now, why did I specifically mention MR venogram? Because the dural sinus minus sinus thrombosis can also present in exactly the similar manner and you don't want to miss that and end up diagnosing IIH. So once a patient is diagnosed with IIH, you treat the patient medically with acetazolamide, follow up, if fields are dropping, again refer for a surgical management. Again, you have a similar scenario, headache, visual function, no optic neuropathy. This time BP was normal but dilated retina assessment showed multiple exudative retinal RD, so this turned out to be a case of VKH. Same scenario, dilated retina assessment, if it shows diabetic retinopathy changes, this can be a case of diabetic papillopathy. So these patients, you don't need to send for MRI or MR venogram. Simple management of the VKH or the diabetic status is enough. 
So these were cases that presented with bilateral disc edema with normal optic nerve function. Now bilateral disc edema with defective vision, sudden onset. Think of toxic optic neuropathy, methanol poisoning. Of course, you'll get the conducive history. Think of arthritic AIO and papillitis. And chronic loss of vision, think of vintage, chronic papilledema, thyroid optic neuropathy, uh, infiltrative causes. So that is all about bilateral disc edema. And next, we're coming to unilateral disc edema. Again, same protocol. Is the optic nerve function affected or not? 26-year-old female, no known comorbidity, presence with defective vision, four days, headaches, pain on eye movements. Left eye, 660 pupils, RAPD, color vision absent, feels, so a central scotoma, fundus showed disc edema one eye. Other eye was normal, dilator retina assessment did not throw up anything new, so this turned out to be a diagnosis of optic neuritis. Till recent years, we used to send only for MRI brain with orbit because our only purpose was to rule out the association of multiple sclerosis, not anymore. So when you send for an MRI brain with orbit, also send for a spinal cord screening and also send specifically for blood test of aquaporin and emoji antibodies because not all optic neuritis is MS anymore. You have to think of, especially in our Asian population, neuromyelitis optica, acute dyssynergy encephalomyelitis, emoji, optic neuritis, and atypical age groups. Diagnosis as LHON should always flash through your head. And always loop in a neurologist when managing these cases. So you have ascertained this is optic neuritis, go ahead with the ONTT treatment protocol, IV pulse steroids, oral steroids contraindicated. Now if the same patient turns up, say, two to three weeks later with this picture, now you see what? You see a macula star. So this is a case of neuroretinitis. And the most important thing in neuroretinitis, neuroretinitis is never associated with MS, so you don't need to do MRI or MRVinogram or anything, just a serological assessment and treatment of the cause is enough. Now, 55-year-old female, diabetic hypertension, presenting with sudden defective vision, 618 pupil RAPD, color vision absent, fundus showed a disc edema. Look at the other eye, other eye showed a cup at risk. So what is this? This is a small, crowded disc, sudden fluctuations, diabetes hypertension can cause disc edema, and this is non-arthritic AIOA. So always look at the other eye, and non-arthritic AIOA, uh, you always have to look for the cause and you always have to differentiate it from arthritic AION. Arthritic AION will present with pallid disc edema day one, while non-arthritic will present with sectoral hyperemic disc edema. And look at the other eye, the other eye will give you the clue. Now non-arthritic AION, you always have to rule out, is there a diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia? If all that is normal, ask for sleep apnea. The spouse will give you the history. And take out the prescription of the patient and check. Is amiodarone there? This is the patient on nocturnal hypertension medications. Ask for usage of erectile dysfunction drugs. I've had a patient who has used this and turned up with non arthritic AION. And it is not up to you to cross out the nocturnal uh, antihypertensive medication or amiodarone. Send a letter to the physician and ask permission. Why are we so worried about the etiological factors? Because though 30 to 40 percent of patients may improve in the same eye, there is a risk of 15 percent involvement of the other eye. So you can at least be assured that you are preventing an AION in the other eye. Now, 70-year-old male, this is a patient close to my heart. Hypertensive, presented with headache one month, sudden loss of vision, left eye two days. Vision was drastically low, half meter counting finger, color vision absent, RAPD. I don't have the fundus picture because this happened in the early days of my practice. It turned out to be a pallid disc edema. I was very sure it was arthritic AIO and ESR was very high in the hundreds. Uh, patient was not willing to go anywhere. He had his only daughter's marriage coming up. So I uh, took him up, we gave him IVMP, and I put him on oral steroids. I insisted, sir, you have to go for a rheumatology evaluation because I didn't know what to do after putting the patient on steroids. And I went on my maternity leave. I drafted, letter to, I drafted a letter to the rheumatologist asking the sir to see the patient. After my maternity leave, when I came back, this patient walked into my OPD being helped by two people, both I optic atrophy. Now why I got this picture is this patient came up for follow-up last week and for the purpose of this discussion I took this picture. What happened was after I went off he met a naturopathy person who told him you are on steroids all this is not good for your health stop everything. He stopped everything within days he developed optic neurite I mean, edema the other eye and then he went to the rheumato rheumatologist and it was uh, temporal artery biopsy was positive and then only he was started on methotrexate. So these cases should not happen. Then, of course, 22-year-old male presented a defective vision. Following an assault, you get an optic neuropathy, decreased IOP. This is hypertonic maculopathy. Again, patients coming with vague headache, perioclea pain. Look at the rest of the retina. Disc edema, always look at the rest of the retina. This will show exudative RD, and this turned out to be on ultrasound. You get the typical T sign. This is a case of posterior scleritis. And, of course, CRVO, CRAO can all present with optic neuropathy, disc edema, 
and of course you rule out compressive causes, thyroid of thermopathy, radiation of thermopathy, infiltrative and of course the famed Foster Kennedy syndrome. So this is the protocol you have to follow and if you are able to prevent disc edema from going into optic atrophy, your mission is achieved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much Dr. Rosemary Tommy. That is really brilliant talk with a lot of personal experiences and they really, as, as you remember, they really are close to your heart.